everybody. Yes, indeed. It is Wednesday. So grab your goat. Grab a really big drink of whatever is your choosing because it is time for the Witches Movie Coven. Indeed, witches, five of us talking about witchy and witches in movies. Yes, and you guys join in because we have a chat room right here. We want your opinions, your thoughts, your lights on, lights off, wands up, wands down. What? My name is Patty Negri. I am one of your hosts. You might know me from The Witching Hour or from Ghost Adventures or from YouTube, um, but I am here with my goat. And let my cohorts introduce themselves, Jason. I'm Jason Makey. I've written nine books about witchcraft over the years, and I'm a huge lover of Macedonian film, so this movie was right up my alley tonight. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Wait a minute, I gotta take a moment after that. <laughs> Something I didn't know about you, Jason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I am Heather Green and I am an I'm an editor um of Witchy Books. I'm also uh a author myself of Lights Camera Witchcraft, which I always forget to have out and available, but here it is. Um, the definitive guide to witchcraft. And which is in Hollywood film and television. I'm also a journalist covering religion and the occult. And I actually studied Eastern European film in film school. Um, however, I had never seen this one until today. Thank you. Richard Leal. Uh, I am Richard Leal. Richard Leal is one name, not two. If I were just Richard, I would be a... Anyway, with that, <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Richard Leal is one name. Uh, I am known as the gentleman psychic. I'm a psychic and a medium. I used to be a psychic and a small, but I gained so much weight. Um, what else can I say? Uh, you know, you, you can meet, you can see me on, on all kinds of things, ghost adventures on, on the occasion. And I teach at university magicus and I decorate things. I also paint. I do, I do stuff. Beautiful stuff indeed. And Courtney. That's me. I'm Courtney Buckley, ghost bait on Scared and Alone, Salem Witch, and I'm, I don't know if excited is the right, oh, hey, that's me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be, I have, a, I have a location, I have a thing to share with you guys later. Um, I'm not, I, I don't know if I'm excited to talk about this movie tonight. I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, speaking of this movie, thank you very much. This movie is called... You'll never be alone. You won't be alone. You won't be alone. Yes, it is. <laughs> I want to be alone personally, but not saying anything. Heather, it is probably not. No, no, I don't want to talk to Heather at all. Yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Richard Lael, do you have an unbiased synopsis of this lovely film? I do. So, um, you are not alone. Has Michael Jackson half naked in a bunch of poses? <laughs> oh, that's right. You're not alone is not the right one. Oh, you're not alone is a is a 2022 horror film, which is horrible to watch. It's a family drama, horrible, horrible film. Oh, right. You won't be alone is the film after watching that horrible, awful other film. And <laughs> music video. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you won't be alone. It is a story about a, a Macedonian spirit um it takes place in the 19th century not in arizona it does not take place in arizona in the 21st century and in fact takes place in macedonia in the 19th century and you won't be alone has a um, an ancient witch who has kidnapped a child and used her witch spit to turn this child this young girl into a witch herself and so the witch goes through and she sort of experiences life. She has been sheltered for 16 years as her mother was trying to prevent her from being taken by the witch. And so she she ends up by going into a village and she, she changes bodies and she tries to figure out what it is like to be human. And then in the end of the film, it has that um, the, the the woman has come back and is amazed. The witch is amazed. Well, you know, why aren't you more like me? Why aren't you like me? And she's tried to kill her. Oh, she's killed the woman's husband, who now is fine was fine with her being a witch, and has killed has come after the baby. But she says, "Don't kill my baby." And and she turns the the witch the, turns the baby into a witch, and then 
I don't remember. I think I think I fell asleep. That's about it. Now that we have a the old witch. <laughs> That's Thank about you. it. That's it. Macedonia, 19th century, it. tries to find out what it is like to be human. And the finest of humanity, I might add. Um, all right, Heather, back to you. Again, I am sure it is not in your beautiful book because you haven't written your European version yet or your otherworldly. Yeah. Right. No, I haven't. Yeah. It's just this was after my book was published. And also it's it's European. So there's a lot of interesting things about this that I'll talk about because it is a, 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 an extremely powerful film. It it ended up uh, the, the director. This was his debut. It was in Sundance. It got lots of acclaim. Um, it hasn't done as well commercially, but it is. Um, not surprising because it is considered an art house film. It's it's much more of a cinematic art than it is what we a standard fare that we that we might see in our theaters. Um, it's not a classic horror film, similar to The Witch. Um, really got um, bad reviews by a lot of people because it's not a classic horror film. This is not. This is also a European film. So when we as Americans watch European films or any films from any other part of the part of the world, we need to realize that they speak a different language, not only not only the actual verbal language, but the actual cinematic language is different. So they go at a different pace. They have different points they have. But this actually captures a, a theme that was very trending, that's been trending in the last 10 years with witch films, is the uh, oppressed woman story of becoming a witch. This has been a trend in witch films in the US and the UK and obviously Macedonia as well, which um, has been like, like I said, it's been trending. You have you have Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. You have um, the, um, uh, what's it called? Um, Motherland Salem, Fort, Fort Salem, Salem, Motherland. Yeah, that those TV shows you have, She Will, that was a Scottish film we watched as well. So you have this trend of the oppressed woman fighting against the patriarchy in a lot of these films. And that's why she becomes a witch. Think think of um, what's uh, um, Maleficent, another one. So they cross genres and they're crossing this theme. So it fits into the trends of this time in witch films. Um, like I said, the guy is, um, he, and actually I found a fascinating, amazing article where he says some really great things about the themes, because this is the type of art house film where you have the surface story, which Richard Lale just spoke about. And then the ending after you fell asleep, Richard Lale, she kills mm -hmm. the old witch because she made the younger baby a witch and there could only be two. There could only be the mother daughter. Uh, dynamic. So she has, she's able to kill the older one because now the baby is the witch. Did you see the little black nails? I, I have to admit, um, I couldn't watch it in one sitting and I tried. And then um, I came in to watch it and I didn't want to have to buy it again. So oh. I, I cheated and I looked at some of the reviews online. So, <laughs> so you didn't see the baby yeah. nails. <laughs> The little baby nails at the end. Um, so yeah, so that's how it ends. She's she's because there can only be two of them. So um, this also is important to know. One last thing, just before we start talking about it, and I will I will share my thoughts and other deeper themes and stuff later. Is that this um, the story? This gives us an opportunity to talk about folk magic because this story of this old maid Maria is a Macedonian legend folklore it's it's not just from this film it actually is resonating in the folklore of that that area and also is similar to other folkloric witches of the woods like the baba yaga so there is a trend in folkloric magic and magic and witchcraft are, are thought of in different ways in eastern europe than we have here in the us and there's a big folkloric trend in those parts which you know really you know people are trying to connect back with. So we can also talk about that a little bit later, but it's, it's fascinating. As you can see, I'm totally fascinated with this movie, just, just as a precursor to my review later. <laughs> James, one other, see. one other thing about this film though, though it's in Macedonia and that's the language that's used throughout the film. It's a very worldly film in that uh -huh. there were Americans involved in the production the director actually immigrated to Australia when he was four yep. years old. So now he's basically Australian and they entered this movie in the Oscars as an Australian film for best 
foreign language picture. So, and it also had a UK production and then actresses from all over Europe. Uh, one specifically from Sweden who was in all, I can't remember her name, but she was in all of the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo movies. And mm-hmm. she's been in some other things since then. So it's very worldly. It's not just about Macedonia, though that's where the folktale comes from. There's a lot of different groups working on this film, which to me made it more interesting that everybody saw this story as something that should be told. It's not just this little isolated group saying we want to hear the story. No, and he writes and he says that he was actually, when he was researching uh, he wanted to make something from his heritage, something from his origins, from the Macedonian Macedonian region, from that area. Mm-hmm. Um, but he um, couldn't find anything that was, um, the folklore was so, um, he said, it, I have to read, read his words. Um, he said that they, they just, they treated women so poorly in all of the folklore. I'm trying to find where he says it. Um, female characters were usually sidelined um, instead, he found inspiration from studying witchcraft, and and he's speaking specifically folkloric witchcraft from the area, and how legends allowed for women to transgress, and um and that was what f- what inspired him is to start with that witch and that mm. folkloric witchcraft, and he specifically is um he is gay, and so he really was, and he lived what did he say in U- I think he said he lived in the UK, and he lived. Uh, he he was often oppressed. He was often felt like the outsider. So he was really attached to this kind of concept. Um, and kind of, even though he said it wasn't about him, he, there is something about that there as well. So he connected he connected to that story in the folklore. So it's it's very interesting. There's a lot of interesting stuff to this uh, that go deeper than than the service story, for sure. I mean, it's almost as deep as the killing tree. I mean, almost. Almost. How dare almost. you? How dare you? We said almost, Courtney. Okay, thank you. As long as we recognize what the superior film is. Um, yeah. okay. Now, who wants to go first on this? Courtney? Okay, I'll go. Um, <laughs> so, I was very excited to watch this movie. Because um, looking at like the the previews or the looking it up online it looked really interesting and it was it was a beautiful film to watch the scenery was amazing the sounds were amazing um i liked hearing the language i don't mind subtitles i liked that a lot my problem with it was and i don't even it's not even really a problem because i'm undecided whether or not i liked it but it was hard to follow at first i feel like i didn't get it until very close to the end then everything made sense but like i struggled the whole way to follow what was happening with the story Mm -hmm. and i don't know if it's just the raging adhd or whatever but like i was watching it i was paying attention um but i didn't mind the gore i thought it was great like i thought it was very i don't it was peaceful in a way which was weird like it, it was just it gave me a lot of feelings that i don't normally associate with movies like this like her like when it when they would like rip apart things and like rip their chest open and like stuff the stuff inside it was like sad almost like Uh which is odd so i i feel like even though i i think i said this out loud like while i was watching the film i didn't get it but i was feeling a lot of things which to me marks a good movie so whether or not i liked it i think it was an excellent movie um i'm still undecided though if I liked it, but I thought like it was sad. I'm filled with ennui. I'm depressed now that that the movie's over. Um, I'm gonna have to watch something, probably The Killing Tree, later <laughs> to get over it. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't. It's it's. I'm undecided. I don't know which way my wand is going tonight because I want to hear what you guys have to say too, and maybe that'll help shape my thoughts on it. But I literally finished watching it and then came and sat down in this chair and came on here. So I, it's like fresh in mm-hmm. my mind. So I'm still processing. Thank you. Anybody want to go second? I'll go. Okay. I, you know, I'll go. I, I, here. Okay. Here's, here's my thought. All of the things that Courtney said, 100%. It is beautiful. It is visually appealing. The language is beautiful. The acting is brilliant. They needed, they needed someone who was not human, who didn't have human interaction. So the actress all of the actors in all of her different forms, male and female alike. 
they all had to act as if everything that they were seeing, everything that they were doing, everything that they were touching was the first time they'd ever done it and do so and not look stupid. That was the thing. Like she was incredibly intelligent, but she just didn't have human interaction. She didn't, she didn't know. So I thought that was incredibly beautiful. Um, as the consummate outsider myself, I also understood, you know, I, I was just telling someone today that when in my in my younger days, one of my first jobs, I worked at a Greek restaurant of all places. I lived in Greece a little bit later on. And one of the hostess or one of the one of the servers came to me and she says, um, oh, can't you just do something? All you do is stand around and stare at people. And I went, I do. And honestly, it was because I had not been in that environment. I, I was I was trying to figure out people and figure out what made them tick and what made them what made them human so on on that they absolutely nailed it it was it was beautifully filmed there were a few shots that when she was sort of um when she when she was first out of the cave and the camera is spinning around i i, I got a little nauseous um but it it was it was slow it was it was slower paced than what one would be slow you know what one would expect but visually it was beautiful. I could understand the story. I just felt like it was, I, I tried to watch it three times and I didn't want to have to pay for it again. Uh, <laughs> otherwise I, I would have finished it, but you know, it was, it was, it's beautiful. Visually it's beautiful. And also I don't know which way my wand will go. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Um, all right. I will go. Cause my little head popped into the thing. Um, yes. It was beautiful. Yes. It was different. I, but I, but I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> it was no time bandits. It was no time bandits. Yes. Entertainment. Time bandits. I, whether you like it or left or silly or boots on a tree, mm. it's entertainment. This, <laughs> I think I just honestly, I, I'd like somebody discovering life, humanity, but it, the, the violence towards women and children. I could not get past. And I've never been an abused woman. It, it must be deep in my DNA, probably many past lives, Bob. But in the my, my womanhood of the world, what I'm attracting, I didn't know why I had to be entertained, even though I know that's I'm oversimplification, by such ugly violence towards women and children. I just, it just hurt me to the core so much that I couldn't get past the, the everything. And I admit that it was, was interesting about it. It's like why we know humanity is not what it is, could be and should be and is supposed to be. But why do we have to put this on the screen? I don't know. That's all I have to say. I do agree with you on that. I, I, I lived I lived in Greece, as I aforementioned, and even still, this was this was I don't know, 15 years ago, you know, or this was early 21st century. And even still, there 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 was animal cruelty and there 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 was still cruelty to women. And I, I mean I could look across the sea and see Albania. And from even that point of view, even the Greeks then if people who were from Albania would would whisper, oh, "I'm from Albania," because they the Greeks were not kind to them. So, you know, that wasn't that long time ago. It is part of a, the culture of their of that part of the world. It's not a pretty part of the world. I mean, the, the that aspect is not is not pretty. If I can just hop in, actually, as someone who has experienced things like that. I feel like this movie, I, of course, it's always going to be uncomfortable to look at. It always is, whether it's real life or it's on film. As someone who has experienced it, I thought that they actually did a really good job with it, portraying the isolation and the, well, this is just normal. This is just what happens. This is what you're supposed to do. And it's hard. It's hard to see and it's hard to stomach. But I think it was a very good representation of that. I mean, obviously not exact, but a very good representation of it. Um, you know, 
no, I, I don't th I don't think that this is a movie that anybody watches to be entertained, at least not me. But <laughs> like I think for what the subject matter was, it they didn't glorify it. They didn't it, it didn't feel glorified to me. It felt real, you know, and sometimes we have to feel something about it. Like we have to watch it, which as I think they did a really good job giving that to us. And I, I also liked I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, I liked when when the the woman was struck by the man and her her new surrogate mum comes in and says he learned it from his father. Yeah. And she's doing this internal dialogue of oh okay so a woman is a woman's place is uh, it's water and it's food and mm -hmm. it's quiet when the man is here. And yeah. I think that's the point and I, and I, you know I I agree with Courtney. I think that um this is that's the point of the movie. It's shoving something very uncomfortable. And 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 why do we have to watch this? I, I would argue that 90% or 95% of our films that we watch have this level or worse. And even if we look at films, uh, you know, from other decades, the violence against women is not even there because of a message about it it's there because it's the way our society is and that is pretty much what this film it's not an entertaining film it's not meant for entertainment anyway we go to we I, you know i turn to i turn to mean girls musical for stuff like that you know <laughs> but this is this film for me was extremely powerful it was beautiful um, it was well acted, just like whoever was, I think Richard Lyle was talking about the acting. To, to see those actors translate that exact type of um, movements even from, from the various actors doing that you were talking about was brilliant. The acting was brilliant. The, the, I, I don't know if this was originally filmed in film. It was film or digital originally. But if this was filmed using actual film i would love to see it on the big screen with actual film not digital because it was absolutely gorgeous and the use of the framing was phenomenal and now i'm sounding totally like a film nerd at this point but i just it was art after art after art and the story it was slow but then again this is an art house film and it's foreign so it's going to move slower than we're used to but I was enwrapped by the message. It was visceral for me. There was points where I was like, yes, as a woman, I was, I was feeling her like the, the, the getting caught between this freedom that you could have through witchcraft, which is essentially what we're talking about. This, this idea that this girl was trapped to save her sort of like um, Rapunzel. And then, and then launched out into the world and free. And the witch kept saying, you're free this way. You can be free. But there's a horror to being freedom. There's a horror to that freedom as well. There's a cost to that freedom. But then you can go ahead and be trapped. And she kept being trapped again. But there's a horror to that trapped. And the woman in this world is, is caught between all of that. And if she becomes free, then she's caught also in potentially being burned. So it's, there's all this, there's this conundrum, this, 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 this place about womanhood in, in this modern patriarchy. And what is beautiful is he even hit on this idea that it's the patriarchy and not a man hating thing, because he shows that the one boy that she falls in love with is also an outsider. Like he is not. So it's not so, so it's the patriarch, it's the structures. So this was so powerful to me that I was just like, I'm going to be thinking about this movie for weeks and coming up with more stuff because, because it is just, and, and the fact I'm going to just, I'm rambling now. The oh. fact that a man <laughs> did this movie, that actually a man made this movie was phenomenal. Now it says something that he was also an outsider being gay. And actually he said, talking about gender, I love this quote. He said, I have to read this and then I'm going to let somebody else talk. But he says that he because he was an outsider, he knew that if he had been a witch, he would have been burned at the stake for sure. And he says, I'm not sure which gender they would think I am, but either way, they would have called me a witch. So he has a deep sense of being an outsider. So I think that is what made him be able to make this film, not in the linear way and to tell this story like folklore 
and to capture the the pain and agony and the rock in a hard place that women are women are stuck in and the pain and all of that blood oh it's just this was just freaking phenomenal sorry <laughs> i'm done <laughs> well thank you for joining the witch's movie coven tonight we are Bye. we are done with tonight's show <laughs> Jason, <laughs> I, you know, I've, I'm more like Courtney and Richard Lale that I've just mixed feelings about this movie. It does move really slow and it need it needed to be trimmed by about 20 minutes. But once you get to the last 40 minutes, there's a there's a power there when you see old maid Maria's story going on. Like I was just captivated, you know, and it was heartbreaking. It was painful to watch. There's a lot in this film that is just disturbing to watch. And that'll be in my movie minute, I think. But it, it, it's just, it's so different than anything I think we've done on this show. I, th I think the, the pace, the art houseness of it makes it really unique in all of the films that we've watched. It is well acted. It's beautiful. There were times, though, when I'm watching the film and I didn't understand what was happening. And I would have to sort of rewind it, for lack of a better term, and go back. Like when, when somebody died... It was such a, like, eh, I, I scratched you and now you're dead sort of thing. And it was hard for me to follow. So I needed to, like, watch it two or three times to see what was going on. There's not a lot of dialogue in this film either. If you're somebody who doesn't like subtitles, don't worry. There aren't a lot of subtitles <laughs> because I think there's about 80 lines throughout the whole film. The, the, the subtitles, the speaking is very sporadic throughout the movie it's just you have to like kind of immerse yourself and not look at anything else i still don't know how i'm gonna vote for this movie i still don't know See? if this is an you know up or down what? okay yeah. something very weird is happening mm. for me at, at as we're all talking about this as i'm talking about it as mm. we're all talking about it i'm feeling so defensive about a lot of the things that you guys are saying that i want to be like no that was awesome no wait but that was really cool no wait but i love that part i think I figured it out and listening to Heather like that really helped mm -hmm. but like I to nerd out like you said a minute ago like film geek nerd out that part when she comes out of the cave and she, it, the it's all everywhere it's it was so immersive like I felt like I had just seen the light for the first time too mm -hmm. like oh my god I, I felt emotional and like the um Oh, what was it? The pacing of the movie. I know I've complained before that movies were too slow. This one was not too slow. I it was I was there. I was in it. It was me. I was I was feeling it the whole time and I think it was just the right pace. I could have probably it was slow. not too slow. It, was too slow. No, it wasn't too slow. It, no, needed, it needed 10 or 15 slow. minutes trimmed. No, and because it wasn't minutes. but no. it wasn't like a horror movie horror movie. Like it wasn't it shouldn't have been. It was experiencing all of these things with her as her you know understanding what it was like to be her in all of these situations and you can't just flash that on a screen and be done with it you have to be there and i felt like i was there and you know what heather i think i'm with you <laughs> No, we watched, the same movie. we watched the same movie courtney it was yes, so girl. visceral this movie was so yes. visceral and but when she she, when she said when she looked at the guy and she was like in love with that guy you, yeah. you it was like i was like i get it i get it. why and like the, i'm not going to say the quotes because courtney may have quotes but um i don't know if you have quotes i have a couple i have a couple <laughs> but i have one other thing to say nerdy film thing is that we we talked i talked about this with she will and she will is similar in that it, although that was done by a woman it's and I studied feminist film theory and feminist film literature is that when you when feminist story, feminine stories, stories that are not told in the classic linear fashion where you this happened, then this happened, you understand it. That's the traditional way. This movie did it a little bit more than she will. If you remember, she will was a it was a circular puzzle putting together situation. This one also is similar is that it doesn't tell the story in a very traditional way, which is very difficult for people to digest since we're so used to the other way of telling stories this is much more of a folkloric idea and then when you get to the final oh that's who this burned freddy krueger um you know this woman is 
you still her story and that is so current that story that she that she um that was told about old maid maria is so current in what we're experiencing with the me too movement and a lot of these stories that we tell about witches the the witch from um oh gosh i could come up with a, tons of a list of them it's it's so powerful and it adds yet another layer of ethics and morality that we have to negotiate that's not easy because is she bad or is she good? We don't know. And the movie leaves us with that. And it's very uncomfortable. We have to make our own decisions about how we feel. And that's not common in our movies. Usually our movies tell us who's good and who's bad. So but, it's uh, very different. But why do we want to be her? This guy, I, I, yeah, it was, it was immersive and I hurt. And, and I understand if we had some, not happy, I don't want a happy ending, but a moral or a reasoning or a something from it, I got nothing. I don't want to be her. I don't want to discover, am I good or am I bad? I don't. Uh. But you don't, you don't want that. But you, when you're watching, it's not like you want that in your life. But when you're watching this movie, you want to watch it through her experience. Yeah, why do I want to experience that? I could go get hit by a bus. I don't want to experience mm -hmm. that. I mean, but it's, I it's the experience. It's the experience that so many of us have in in a different way that it's an understanding of people who have you know who gone I, through things differently i think i completely understand like i said i have never had that kind of abuse or anything like it but it hurt me to the core so much it does not make me have extra sympathy for you or those who have I, I'm obviously missing something here because I, 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 it, weirdly I agree with all the points all of you have made. Heather and Richard and, and Courtney, I agree with all those points. Yes, they're feeling the acting was good, but I don't know why I have, I, I'm not, there's not a redeeming thing for me in it. But you I, are not, you will not be alone in that, Patty. Well, that's the, that's <laughs> the thing though, but that, that is it right there, I think, because, or to me at least, is that you, it's not about sympathy. It's never about sympathy. Nobody wants that. It's, it's when you're going through an experience like that for, for that experience in particular, the isolation that you experience, that is a, a quintessential part of that. That's how it happens. No one will believe you. If you tell someone no one will no one will believe you they could never like you're completely alone you have no friends you have no family you have have no connections to anyone and you are literally alone in that and that is one of the hardest things for people to understand when we, you hear that like well why didn't she just leave because she had nowhere to go because she was alone. And, and it's so hard to grasp I think this is it for me like this was it for me this was the part that like got me that it's it's watching this movie was if you were experiencing the movie because i don't think it's like it's not like watching the movie it's experiencing yeah. the movie if you were experiencing the movie in that way you were experiencing how that felt and so like one of the worst things that people i see people say it online i see everything in in, in regards to like an abusive situation why didn't she leave she because she should have just left you can't because you're alone and and for people to understand that on such a visceral level like this film did it's like, oh, okay, I, I wasn't alone. Somebody got it. Like somebody else got it. I think also, I think that the movie plays also with the idea of, of, of this, this idea of freedom. And so that's what it's going. It's, it's not so much of, so she's, so she's jailed as a child. And the mother says, you can't go out there because there's horrors out there will rip you apart. Then when she goes out initially, it's like, wow, this world is beautiful. And then she see, and she's free. So the witch frees her. The witch gives her this freedom. But then there's a restriction to that. Obviously, she has the witch spit and she has to do, you know, she becomes a witch with the nails. So there's a, but there's a freedom to it that she has. And the witch keeps saying, now you're free from all of those constraints. But she then goes, she then wants to see what society is. So she goes back in and first she learns as a as a young girl um, the constraints of being the young wife if, because of the patriarchy. Then she gives that up and she goes into the dog, the, becomes a dog. And then she tries that, that on. Then she tries being a man and she realizes there's restrictions and restraints with that world as well. And then she gives that up and then she becomes the young, the young girl where she finds freedom and happiness again, but then eventually restriction. So it's this back and forth of where can I find the freedom? 
And then also if I, if I do transgress and if I do cross over and they know I will be burned and that will be en- be the end of it. And it's the greatest horror. So this is sort of this idea of playing with society and playing with your freedom and your identity and what, what freedoms can I have? And the witch being the witch is the most free. Um, and the woman at the end, you know, she says, Maria says, you gave it, you know, pretty much you gave it all up. You want to be this, this is what you want. You're not free. And she says, yeah, this is what I want. Um, so it's, it's, it's just an interesting play. It, you know, the horror is part of it. B- blood is part of being a woman. I think that was the, the part of the message on that, but I think it's a, a play with identity, with freedom and, and where we want to be and what, what we, what we're willing to put up with. Give I up. Also, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. I, I also think too, with the construct, it shows uh, clearly Maria and the girl, they, they were from a little bit of a different time, but they were from around the same time, a little bit of a different couple hundred years. But they, when, when she was revealed, when Maria was revealed, they burned her. They they tortured her. All she wanted was to be loved. All she wanted was a, 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 a husband. All she wanted was a child. And then because she didn't get it, she saw something of herself in, in this little girl, in this baby. And so she was frustrated and angry with the fact that why aren't you like me? I, I feel so alone. I'm so alone. I thought you were going to understand me and you're not, you don't understand right. me. Right. And so, you know, it, it, it can take, I think that when horrible things happen, there are two paths that one can go on. Um, for instance, my, my own mother, my late mother, was essayed by her stepfather from the time she was three until she ran away from home when she was 16. That kind of abuse leaves a scar on a person. But my mother said, I will not let that happen to another child. I will not let that happen. I will make it a beautiful world. But I've seen other people who have gone through as bad or or worse situations and they they be sort of become a mirror to that and they 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 perpetuate that ugliness and that evil and that that hurt that continual pain and i i think that maria was showing a very humanistic quality in the fact that she was this monster but she really was feeling very much alone and wanted to be understood which i think is really the humanist the most human thing that one could achieve is to be understood and to be seen. Yeah. And I, I think too, I, I, just really quick that, that constant, like that, that struggle to like break the cycle that, that visceral need to like do something different and break it. And then continuing to get caught in the same cycle, no matter what you did, that, that scene at the end, towards the end, when, you know, she finally falls in love and she has everything she thinks that she wants. And then they're saying to her like, Oh, where's your husband? And she comes outside and his body's there and she's screaming on the ground and the old witch is walking. It's just like the back of her walking into the woods and you know what happened. And it's like, that was like, Oh my God, like that. My heart hurts thinking about it. Like, it's just having that taken from you like that. Like I'm, it's so much. I think, was- the ti- I think the title of this movie is important. You won't be alone. So the little girl in the Vena does not want to be alone and rejects the idea. But even old maid Maria is looking for somebody to be with as to not be alone. But her idea is that it's just going to be the two of us running through the woods, eating bunnies or whatever else. And that's not good enough for the other one. I think it's about finding family. It's about finding community. It's about finding a place. And I, th- I think that title is very specific and plays into sort of the end game of the entire film. Right. And the morality issue that I mentioned earlier is, 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 is not so, is the question of, is this, this old maid Maria who has been demonized through folklore and also we see as a witch um, in her own story, because she um, because she wanted her own husband and her own family, the same story, and she was then burned at the stake as a witch. So she's been demonized, 
And then we see this story over and over again in our ghost horror films of the 2000s, starting there where you have that woman who's been burned at the stake then come back to haunt and do this stuff. So we see it here. And here we have her backstory of why, of course, another very trendy thing. And we have sympathy for her. And even though like Patty was saying, why would I want to be like her? It's not that we want to be I think it's not that you want to go around eating animals and doing that stuff is I think it's they created this monster who would be demonized normally and be horrible. And they've gave her sympathy. They showed us why we may not agree with what she does. And it's what I say in my book when I talk about this kind of character, but we understand why she does it. Yeah. And, and so that creates a sympathy there where you go, Oh, it's, it's, it's that tragic character. You go, yeah, this is this is so sad this happened to her. And now it's happening to the next girl. And um and it's I don't know. For me, this was powerful on so many levels. And somebody in the chat said uh the reviewer say watch it more than once to get it. I could definitely see this. I would watch this more than once, um, you know, from a lot of from a lot of different perspectives as a film as a film, you know, nerd and and just it's just beautiful art. So it's, uh, yeah, I was, I'm with you, Courtney. I was awestruck and powerful, felt all the feels viscerally throughout. Yeah. It's impossible it. not to I... feel for Maria though. Right. I mean, uh, yeah. like, you feel know, she, the she's the witch, but you understand why she does what she does. You understand why she doesn't like society. Your heart breaks for her while you watch the film and you watch her story kind of unfold, especially in the last 30 minutes of the movie, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. And the voice doesn't match the, the Freddy Krueger look. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah. you're looking at her and you want her to be, you know, this awful thing. And she has this very calm kind of tone. So, yeah. I have to say though, that I will not be watching it again twice or three times or four times. <laughs> I barely watched I barely watched all of it. Like I I think I I I missed off on the last 30 minutes, which is where it actually gets good. Um I will not be watching it again. Ever. Okay. Not ever. I don't I, think I will ever watch it again. I don't think I want to. I don't want to hurt like that. I understand okay. hurt and pain when I get something out of it but I still didn't get something out of it. I know the struggle of women. I know the struggle of abuse. I, 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 I. Do we and have that's any fair. That's yeah. what oh, art no, is. It is. That's, it what, is. that's what art is, Patty. Not everybody's, every piece of art speaks to I know, every, which is every person. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. If I watch, Absolutely. if I watch this again, though, I'm going to close my front door because it was open this afternoon while I was watching the movie. And there were times when I was just worried that children were going to walk past or <laughs> the, the male lady was going to show up and, you know, really wonder what goes on inside my house. So yes. I mean, if I watch it a second time, I'll be far more careful. All right. Well, do we have any quotes? Um, I do. I think that. So here's the thing. This was a very difficult movie for me to quote because my ADHD is raging and i was trying so hard to pay attention to it that like stopping to write things down was very difficult um but i went back and i found some that like stuck out to me what i will say is i loved it was like listening to a poem and i loved that i thought it was very interesting so there was it felt like everything that was said was poignant um as you were watching it to me um but i have a couple um one is as she's just starting to like sort of break off from the witch and explore she says sparrows but are sparrows snakes are women wasps kisses chains me am i devils um and then the sky to bits it chewed her up spat out the whisper mama bits which mama is what was left which mama and me the witch me the witch sometimes my wish is come back whisper mama just for a little bit but the walls, I want them to come back never. Mm -hmm. um, which powerful. I thought was, yeah. That's really powerful. Um, and then she said, the man, the eye water he wants from the woman. Which I, I Heather, we talked about that before. That was a big one. Um, and then, this is like heartbreaking. But every last bit of me thirsts for every bit of him. 
only not the skin flesh him him the boy inside him the boy with the eyes mm -hmm. the eyes that look scared even when they're smiling it's that boy him i want to put my arms around to hold him to hold him to chase the that timidness away and like hearing that while they're falling you're watching them fall in love and like this is you know you've seen all of this horror this whole time and now there's something beautiful happening and then what comes next was awful um but then i feel like i had a moment of like i don't know that taking back the power moment when i was watching towards the end when she um the witch killed tried to kill the baby and she immediately went to the baby and did the witch spit on the baby knowing that the other witch would die from that and like didn't hesitate and that to me was the minute the cycle was broken because she did it to save her not to save her not to save herself to save the baby that's what it felt like and then she looked at the witch as the witch was dying and the witch is crying and she says how is it so simple for you mm -hmm. and i thought that that there was the best line in the whole movie yeah so those are my quotes Beautiful. And you notice the, the quotes you put at the beginning and then the ones that you read, the, the English or the language gets gets better because she's yeah. learning language. So she starts mm -hmm. speaking better. Yeah. Just, oh my goodness. Yeah. Just, <laughs> I know, I, I, totally. <laughs> I was surprised you didn't include Let's Go Wife of Boris, which was my favorite <laughs> quote from the film. I, I just... There was a lot of like ones that made me giggle, but it mm. didn't, those weren't the ones that stuck with me. I think a lot of this was so beautiful that that's, these are the ones. And like the, how is it so simple for you? I thought like, I literally mm. thought I was pass out. like that was just, cause it is, cause that's it. You did it. And that's the happy ending to me. Yeah. Broke it. Okay. Jason, do we have so a link? movie moment on this so before line? i do this i have to i have to ask who was the one who se who selected this movie this was this was one that i wanted to watch that came out um after my movie so i guess technically it was my selection okay good because that's what i wrote in my thing so i just wanted <laughs> yeah, to make sure not. that i had it right so <laughs> so before i be before i begin this if you're watching like the first half of the movie, the little girl is taken by the witch and the witch is trying to teach her how to be a witch. So while I was watching that bit, all I could think of was tonight on skills, my adopted witch mother taught me. <laughs> first up, skincare. Hail the witch mother for her skincare regimen. Do you want your skin to look like someone ripped off all the skin off your body, leaving nothing but muscle? Witch Mother has the answer for you. Just follow Witch Mom's daily skincare regimen of not showering, not moisturizing, and not giving a damn, and you'll look hideous in no time. <laughs> Diet and exercise. Nothing fuels a witch more than delicious and tasty warm blood. Break the neck of a dog or rabbit and get to sucking. Let me push your head down into all of that delicious goo. Get it all in your mouth and don't worry about being sloppy. <laughs> Witches love to leave a ring of blood around their mouths fashion in the era of fast fashion no fashion is easier than taking the entrails of the dead stuffing them into your abdomen and then transforming before the eyes of your adoring fans want to look like a peasant a farm laborer a sweet and innocent girl get to stuffing those entrails into your stomach you'll be happy that you did cardio everyone knows that witches were put on this earth to do one thing walk around that's right. Keep your girlish figure by simply walking around aimlessly from small village to small village. You don't need a house or a place to go. Just walk around aimlessly and you'll remain a size two forever. <laughs> Nail care. Oh, God, I just can't keep doing this. It's so rough. This is a strangely disturbing movie, and I may never talk to Heather and Green ever again for suggesting it. Somehow, I find myself missing the suggestions of Courtney Buckley. I didn't like your highness but it didn't leave me sick to my stomach. When I was a kid, I couldn't dissect a frog in high school biology class because I was so squeamish. And now you want me to watch a movie that has witches face down in a bloody rabbit? I just have trouble doing it. And I'm guessing I'm not alone with these feelings. <laughs> 
Yay. Yeah. Here, here. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thank you. We all know what the movie is about now, or maybe <laughs> to go get no. it. No. <laughs> I still don't think we do, so, but so we have uh, one more thing to do, and that is wands up or wands down. <laughs> Claws. Patty's face is my favorite thing that's ever happened on this entire show. <laughs> This like <laughs> okay, we got up, 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 down, neutral. We got on the room. We got up and horns up. We got ones down, ones down, ones down. Yay! Good, good, good night, all. Good night. Um, again, beautifully made movie. I didn't think need to be made. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard I think I, to like this you have to be in the mood for it you have to be ready for it like if you've eaten some gummies or had a, a bottle of wine this is not the time to watch this film mm -mm. I love how um how like just strong Patty's opinions have been the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> last one was none of your opinions matter. This is the best movie I've ever watched. And this one is none of you have taste. This is terrible. Turn it should it never have been made. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my favorite? What's going on over there? I love this. Did you guys hold on to Black Philip tightly watching all those people being destroyed and in trouble? Oh, he wasn't even there. No, he was in the other room. Cover yeah. those eyes. No, um, no, no. That was fun. And that's what we do. We love yeah. to disagree. We agree to disagree. And it's never, ever personal. Um, even if they're all. Sometimes it is. <laughs> Well, this one got a little close. <laughs> Courtney, Courtney hexes people if they don't like her movies. What are you all Hex talking about? I'm not. I would never hex Patty. Only you, because you, <laughs> Patty has an opinion, and you just talk mean to me. <laughs> We're here. Patty is a allowed to have an opinion. Jason just needs to turn his light off. Um, I, all right. <laughs> It, it so, doesn't work as much now because it's bright outside. It's really sad this time of year. Uh, so what are we doing next week? Little Witches, 1996. Okay. It's a teen horror, horror film uh, a la The Craft. Nice. Okay. No entrails? I know there's naked bodies, but I don't know if there's Ooh. entrails. I don't I think I love so. naked bodies. I love naked. I love the naked bodies in this. Naked bodies are beautiful. I get the art of a naked body. Just there's devils. Up. There's devil conjuring in this in Little Witches. What? But it's can but it's Canadian, so everyone's very polite the whole way through. <laughs> yeah. They apologize. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Grace <laughs> <Eatony. laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah it's a canadian it's a ca canadian movie that is um that was made the same year as the craft so it has that you know teen girls into witchcraft thing going on sweet that'll be fun yay so you guys everybody out there watch it Boobs and butts. Have the same. Boobs, boobs and butts. No. Boobs and butts. No, that's not boobs, boobs and butts. And butts. Yeah. <laughs> All go. right. Who's got anything coming up that they want to talk about while we have a few minutes left? Courtney, Courtney, Courtney. I finally have one. I finally have one. Okay, so I'm going to the Wicked Piss of Parafair. I'm going to be there in May. There it is. The Wicked Piss of Spring Parafair. Um, for those of you that watch Scared and Alone, you will recognize the location. It is at Harstuff Hall. You can come and see me. I will have a table Sunday, May 19th from 10 to 4. Yay! Yay! I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jason. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to Tennessee for the Pagan Unity Festival, where I will be through Sunday. It's a really fun festival. It's between Nashville and Memphis this year. And then I'll be at the North Dakota Grand Sabbat at the end of May. And this is not about a thing I'm doing, but it's about a thing I did. I turned in the first draft of my 10th book for Llewellyn 
It's a biography of Raymond Buckland that has been vexing me for two years. And wow. my editor did not kill me. So it's probably okay. So that's good. Very Yay. excited to get this done. That's awesome. Richard Lael. Uh, yes, that would be me. Richard Lael is one name, not two. If I were just Richard, I would be a dick. That's because I see people <laughs> calling me Richard. And that is not my name. But I am, I am here in New Orleans. And uh, I, I'm at the Gentleman Psychic. And I am everywhere. I'm so easy to be found. I'm everywhere. I got nothing else. <laughs> I get together. <laughs> I, hi, I am um, going to be, um, we're, uh, well, I'm going to be in Atlanta. Uh, obviously, I am in Atlanta right now, but attending Mystic South in in the end of July, I actually am on the board. So we are in planning mode right now. Um, lots of people have um, gotten their, um, what, gotten their assignments and we're just so busy with that. So I'm kind of caught up with that right now, but I will be there and I am doing a doll a workshop and I will be around um, signing books and, and talking about talking to people about editing and writing books as well. I usually do that somehow, somewhere during the event. Um, and until then I'm just here in Atlanta doing my thing, maybe a few other podcast interviews about my book and, and just generally, um, you know, writing news stories and hanging out with you guys. So that's it for now. Perfect. You can find me at heathergreen.net if you need to find me. <laughs> Find her. She's worth finding. Um, all right. I ha I am leaving actually this weekend for Arizona, Globe, Arizona, the old Globe Paracon. Supposed to be a real haunted, cute little like mining town, ghost town. I'm going to be doing seances and galleries and workshops. So come on down if you can find it. And then two weeks from now, I am hitting Romania with my bestie Sebastian for a vampire and witch tour of Romania, it can be, it's going to be once in a lifetime. So if you can even think about coming, come with us. And then I'm going to get back in time to go to Pennsylvania for Penhurst Paracon in time to turn around and go to Texas. Cause you got to go to Dallas after you go to Romania for a little witchy weekend <laughs> um, at Miracles of Joy. And then it's the end of May. So follow me, go to pattynegri.com. I am still hacked on Facebook. I can post sometimes if I, if somebody stands on their left foot at the exact moment, somebody goes waka waka, comments on one of my things. I can back into Facebook through Meta on Instagram and posts, but I cannot get on Facebook to look at anything. I cannot remark or answer things. And if anybody gets a message from me on Facebook, it's not me. It's some guy in his tidy whities in his mother's basement. <laughs> I'm still working on it. That reading I... wasn't from you? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not as many as I have on TikTok. TikTok, there are so many Patty Negris, it's ridiculous. And I'm sure you guys get it too. Richard Lael, when we do what we do, it's like, I don't think it would be hard for social media with all AI to figure out there can't be 14 of the exact same face, Patty Negri or Richard Lael. Lamar. I, it shouldn't be hard, but it apparently wow. is. So mine's moved on to like senators and congressmen, but I'm still not there. But pattynegri.com and you can get to all my other social medias, which is there. I will be here the next two weeks. I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks. So all of you guys have to fill in for me while I'm gone. Say what I would say. You guys know what I would say. You guys this figure out. My the opinion is the only one that matters and everyone else can go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all a right. new thing. That's a new thing. <laughs> One of us will take a strong stand every week. Strong stand yeah. every week. Yeah, take a strong stand. Um, all right. Do we have anything else to talk about? We 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 never end early, and we don't want to cackle for two minutes. What can we do instead of cackle? It was enough. No, later I think it's silent. I think next week we're going to have to do a spell to get your Facebook back with everybody oh, yeah. in the chat, and you know, all of us together. We're going to have to work on that. Okay, I I love that. We should do a spell. If if we can if we as a coven can come up with an anti-hacking spell, we'll be the most famous witches in the world, whether we like our movies or not. <laughs> we'll be the little witches doing the uh, during an anti-hacking spell next week. How's yes, that? I love it. All right. And on that note, we are down. So are we doing silent or are we doing cackle? 
or a silent let's cackle. cackle. Let's cackle. We need to okay. cackle. But we have to cackle in Macedonian. Okay. okay. All right. One, two, three. <laughs> 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 